May is Skin Cancer Awareness Month, and it was this time last year that I was diagnosed with multiple skin cancers, a basal cell on my nose and a squamous on my forehead. I went through several Mohs surgeries, several plastic surgeries, where they reconstructed my nose with ear cartilage. Along this journey, I have become just so blessed and humbled and grateful to get to know some of the people along the way. You have all shared so many of your stories with me and I'm just so, I, I just am so humbled to be able to get the word out on what is an epidemic in Colorado and that is skin cancer. And I went in just for a regular skin check. I couldn't even see the spot on my nose that they ended up biopsying. And I'm so grateful that we have the medical technology and the doctors to help us in situations like this. And I never thought it would happen to me. But while we're thinking about, we're doing all the right things with the sunscreen, with the hats, with all of that, and you think it can't happen to you, maybe you're not thinking about your children. And while many of us put sunscreen on our kids, we don't really think about skin cancer being a killer for our kids, like the numbers are so high for adults. So I want to introduce you to my friend, Mary Ann Bannister. Mary Ann has a lot of Colorado connections as yeah. well, but she has been so generous in coming in today to tell the story of her daughter daughter Claire. She lost her daughter Claire to melanoma, skin cancer. So teenagers are dying from skin cancer, Claire. It, it's something that really blindsided us. So it will be nine years in October since we lost her. And what happened at 14, she was not in a risk factor at all. She wore sunscreen all the time. We were highly preventive just because we're a very cautious family. Yep. Uh, being a reporter, you always know all the risk of everything. Yep. She was screened six months earlier. It was fine. But all of a sudden, the mole started to change, and we were put off getting it removed because we were told kids don't get melanoma. Yeah. Well, as we found out the hard way, kids not only get melanoma, the proportion is, it's ep epidemic proportion. Some have said Skin Cancer Foundation. Well, and here at Elevation, the higher the elevation, the higher the risk, You're at right? double the risk right here in Denver yeah. alone. You and go up into the aware. high country, and it's even worse. Mm -hmm. And so the factors for young people where it gets misreported is because if you do melanoma cases from birth to 100, it's mostly Anglo men over 50. Mm -hmm. Well, if you look at cancers in young people, because there aren't as many cancers, it's the number two in adolescents, 13 to 19. It's the number one in young adults under 30. It's the number one cause of cancer death in young women 25 to 30. And it's increased the diagnosis rate 253% in the last 40 years. Which is staggering. Right. And shocking. And, and you're when, going, wait, what, what happened? Why is this? Well, right? when they told me about the basal cell carcinoma, I said, if it's not going to kill me and it's slow growing, why do you want to cut up my face? And he said, because eventually, like a basal or a squamous can right. metastasize and eventually will kill you and we right. can't fix it. But I was so unaware of the statistics well, that you're reporting. And the reasons that it's not only due to the sun, that's what's really is the cause that we're all about. Our daughter, Claire, developed it simply because she went through puberty. She went through the age of 14, hormonal changes that are commonplace happened. Yep. And something in her body kicked in forward and she developed melanoma. And you can have a genetic predisposition you don't know about. You could have a risk factor going through um, puberty, women who can develop it while they're pregnant, people who have hy um, hypothyroid can develop it. If you're going through other cancer treatments, you're more susceptible to it. There's all these other factors that we want people to be aware of. So at the Claire Marie Foundation, which is what we do in her honor, mm -hmm. we raise awareness that it's a risk factor this age group. We also then offer education and awareness and prevention that you should wear the sunscreen because that's the predominant reason. Yes. Wear UPF 50 clothing, it blocks 98% of the sun, but get screened. Because the bottom line was we were delayed three months for no reason. Mm -hmm. And in young people, it's more aggressive and invasive. Yeah. And young people only get melanoma. They don't get the squamous cell or basal See, cell. See, again, these are so many things I didn't know. Right. And it's really, really urgent to get it in. And so if you remove it, as you found out, yep. you remove the mole, you're removing the risk of disease. Yep. If you put it off, it can be a problem. 98% treatable if you find it early, 24% later. Yeah, and if it's melanoma and it's advanced stage, it's that's, like a 15% survival rate, right. is that correct? Yes, exactly. And that's the thing is, the difference is what you had in not negating it by any stretch, because it certainly can become deadly. But initially it's on the top 
uh, level of the skin, the epidermis, it, yep. melanoma goes into the body and spreads through the organs. Yeah. And that's the beast. Amazing. And that's the thing. And for young people, their bodies, all the hormones and genes and everything are cooking that makes them wonderful and yep. young and youthful. And then if you add sun to it on top of it, you've got the double risk. And if you're in Colorado, which every time I brought the girls here, I put more sunscreen on them than ever before yeah. and did all the necessary things. But the bottom line is sunscreen doesn't only prevent it, you have to get screened. So where can people go to get additional information about this? So our foundation, clairemariefoundation.org. Um, and just to let you know, proportionately, we have done in Maryland and South Carolina uh, over 1,400 screenings since 2016, 16%. 16% of the young people we screen, 13 to 29, yep. have needed to have biopsies. It's on the rise. It is. It is on it is. the rise. Skin Cancer Foundation in New York City has wonderful information as well. It's a quick check at the dermatologist. It's not embarrassing. It's quick, and they can see things that you oh, cannot. Yeah. 10 minutes, and you're in a paper yeah, gown. And exactly. You get to know your dermatologist really well. <laughs> and it's just, it's all about being aware, and it's all yeah. about prevention. Marianne, thank you thank you for Kathy, sharing your so story. Much. And hopefully, it will change somebody's life I hope out there. so. Go I hope so. Go and get so. your skin checked. Thank you. Thank you, Kathy.